Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this video, we're going to look at the second of two well-known uh, techniques or, or systems for solving systems of linear equations in two variables. This one goes by a number of names. Uh, in our textbook, it's referred to as the elimination method, but is also referred to as the addition method or, as sort of a compromise, the elimination by addition method. How does this one work? At first glance, this will seem a little bit more complicated, but I think we can get the hang of it. So what do you do with this method? What you do in this method is you multiply both sides of one or both equations by a constant or constants so that the coefficients of one variable are the same in absolute value but opposite in sign. Same in absolute value but opposite in sign then add the equations to eliminate a variable. What do I mean by this? So if you look at these two equations in this first example, you notice that if you were to add these two equations together, nothing would eliminate. However, you could do this. Take the first equation and leave it exactly the way it is, so no change there. But notice you could take the second equation and multiply both sides by 3, remembering that you can always multiply both sides of an equation by the same thing. That's the principle of balance we've talked about before. Um, oops, that didn't quite come out the way I wanted. 3x minus 2y. Multiply this side by, by 3, and then multiply this side by 3. Why would you do that? Well, if you do that, then your system can be rewritten like this. Your top equation doesn't change. 5x plus 6y equal negative 8. The second equation becomes 9x minus 6y equals 36. Now this is what I'm getting at. Notice that if you look at the coefficients of y, they're the same in absolute value, as in 6, but they have opposite signs. So if you were to take these two equations and add them, adding down the column, so to speak, the y terms would add out to zero. Here's exactly what you get. 5x plus 9x combined like terms, adding down the column, you get 14x, 6y minus 6y is zero, and minus eight plus 36 is 28. Now, we're finally at a point that sort of will remind us of what we did by substitution. This little trick uh, enables us to eliminate one of the variables so you have an equation in one variable only. And since that's the case, to get the x by itself, we would simply have to divide both sides by 14. And that would give me that x is equal to 2. That's one of the values. Now again, a system of equations in two variables will have to have uh, two coordinates, an x value and a y value. We still have to get the y. How do we do that? So in this method, what you do is once you've had the value of one variable, just pick any of the equations you've looked at so far and substitute into any one of them to figure out the other variable. So we have discovered so far that x is equal to 2. What's the corresponding y value? Just pick one of the equations, maybe the, maybe the top one, and substitute 2 for x. Leave everything else the same. That gives me an equation that's only in y. So I should be able to continue on and get 10 plus 6y. Leave a little bit of space here for what I'm going to do next. I'd like to get rid of the 10, so whatever I do on one side of the equation, as long as I do it on the other side, it keeps the equation balanced. Uh, and I get 6y equals negative 18. Divide both sides by 6, again keeping it balanced, y is equal to negative 3. And now I have both an x value and a y value, and that tells me that my solution is the ordered pair to negative 3 or as a solution set, the, ordered pair, the set containing the ordered pair to negative three. 
So that this method is a little bit more creative. There's an obvious advantage to it. So if we only had the substitution method, let's look at another example, we would have to solve one of these equations for one of these variables. No matter what you do, you would end up eventually having to divide by something and get fractions, which is automatically dangerous. So let's see if we can get the elimination method to work here. Now, it's a little bit more creative because what you're trying to do is you're trying to eliminate one variable or the other, multiplying both sides of one or both equations by something. Now, it's a little bit harder to see here how you could make something disappear, but try this. Suppose you took the top equation and multiplied both sides by 7, and the bottom equation and multiplied both sides by negative 2. Why am I choosing that? Well. I was thinking that it might be nice to get rid of the x uh, terms this time. And if I multiply the top by 7 and the bottom by negative 2, the coefficients of the x would both be 14. One would be 14 and the other would be negative 14, so that the x terms could add out. Why not multiply by the, uh, something to get rid of the y's? That would be fine too. doesn't matter. I think you might see we'd multiply the top equation by negative 2 and the bottom one by positive 3. But let's just keep going with this and see where it takes us. So rewriting the equations, the top one becomes 14x plus 21y. 7 times 8 is 56. Uh, negative 2 times 7x is negative 14x minus 4y equals negative 22. So that's nice. You see here that if I were to add down the equations, the 14x minus 14x would give me a 0. 21y minus 4y would give me 17y, which isn't too bad. And 56 minus 22 would give me 34. Divide both sides by 17, because I now just have an equation in one variable. And y is 2. Now, to get x, substitute back into either of the original equations, whichever one you like. Uh, maybe this time I'll pick on the second one, and I'm doing that rather randomly, I must say. So here is that second equation without all the doodads all over it. 7x plus 2y equal 11. I'm going to substitute uh, the value of 2 for y. So 7x plus 2 times 2 equals 11. Continue to solve. 7x plus 4 equals 11. Subtract 4 from both sides. Let me create myself a little space here. Subtract 4 from both sides. 7x is equal to 7. And divide both sides by 7 x is equal to 1, the ordered pair as, in, uh, as a solution set would be 1, 2. Now, in real life, you get to pick which of these methods you want to use, elimination or substitution. You can use one, one sometimes and one the other, or you can always use one. Uh, either is okay. Your choice. With a little experience, you'll get a sense for which is most efficient in any given circumstance. Take care.